All right, Shalom. All praise, is honor, and glory is always be unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah by Hashem Kakwadash, which is the Paleo Hebrew for the name of the Heavenly Father, the ancient days, the creator of all energy, being Yahweh, and that of his son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, being Yahweh Shai. Those be the only names in which salvation may be obtained, whether you are given the spirit to receive that or not. I'd like to give double honors unto the elders and the apostles of GMS Great Millstone, who through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, rule all of the nation of Israel well today. And peace, love, blessing, salutations be unto the elect of the nation of Israel, begin with 144,000 prophets, all the way down to one-third men, women, and children, who are truly able to receive the glorious light of this gospel, all through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, all right, who are coming out of this world, all right, whithersoever they be, all right, and coming into a whole new way of living, man, all right, being prepared for this great day of our salvation, man, all right, coming into a whole new way of understanding and a whole new way of being. All right, casting off the ways of the heathens around you and returning unto our one true way, man, all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right, and I was dealing with this guy, all right, this, uh, uh, we call him grape juicers, man, this uh, so called Christian out here. And, uh, you know, he had pulled out this scripture, Matthew 28. Um, and it, I, don't, I don't know if it was this, this exact scripture, man, but it was, you know, one similar to it. Uh, 28 and verse 19 it says go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and what he was trying to say is that you see salvation or or, or you know the, the the word all right was was to be for all nations man okay but this isn't the case because as we're going to see we're going to go ahead and get a couple examples to break it down all right as we're going to see the all the promises and everything uh as far as that man this word this knowledge all right, is meant for the nation of Israel to get, man, specifically the elect, okay? They are the ones that were promised to inherit the planet Earth, all right? And now the planet Earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. That's why everything is upside down, man. The true judges of this planet Earth are hidden, all right? There is no, uh, uh, the ways of the Heavenly Father are not established here, man, all right? That's why you got all kind of uh, uh, manner of unclean uh, animals being eaten and messing up the ecosystems of the planet earth and the trees being chopped down and you know everything is just upside down because the the, the ways of Yahweh by shim Shai, the instruction he gave of us which is the instruction of life the doctrine of life according to the scriptures all right has been replaced for the doctrine of death man all right <clears throat> now this guy brought this out in hopes to try to try to make a point that like i said that this thing's for everybody but it's not and, uh, you know, we're clearly going to get that, man. And, you know, what I really want to concentrate on is edifying what this scripture is talking about, man, because it was put there for a reason. All right. But what we got to do is go into the go to the go into the context of why it was written there, man. The scriptures do not uh, uh, contradict themselves, man. And the heavenly father is not a man that he shall lie. All right. So we're going to get into what it's saying. All right. Go into the context of why this was being written. All right. Which is something that, that I try to do with the guy. I say, hey, man, let's go ahead and go over here and see why that was being written and the guy didn't want to go there you know probably because he you know didn't want to didn't want to you know see what was to come out or you know was uh uh you know knew that that you know cherry picking one verse never works all right and uh you know didn't want to hear it man but you know this is specifically for the elect of the nation of israel man all right so you know it don't matter if you wanted to hear or not you know but you know lord willing the elect will hear this and uh you know whosoever uh you know this this come upon man that they might be edified you see well, let's go ahead and see why this is being written, man. Uh, Matthew 28 and 19. And we'll go ahead. I just want to, I'll grab a quick example real quick, man, just showing that, you know, first of all, that the Heavenly Father is not a liar, and to get a couple of the promises that he gave us. This is Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So the Heavenly Father, he does not change. He does not change his mind. He does not lie. He's not going to just say, oh, I said this, but never mind, I'm going to do that. Okay, and that's why the children of Israel, the sons of Jacob, have not been consumed because he gave them a promise, man. All right, and once again, let's go ahead and grab the promise real quick, and then we'll go into the context of what that scripture is being said. Just to just to clarify the fact, all right, that there's a uh, according to according to Christianity, if, the, if this is being brought out the way that he's bringing out, there's a contradiction there, man. All right, so let's get into the scriptures because, as I said, they do not contradict themselves. To get into the scriptures and see what it's meaning. Otherwise, all these prophecies we're about to grab, you need to show us what these are meaning. All right? If, if, if that one verse is correct, you need to be able to explain yourselves, man. 
You can't just pull out one verse and just everything else is void. That's not the way it works, man. You need to explain it. All right, this is uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are on the face of the earth. So he chose the nation of Israel above all the people to, do, to be what, man? To be his inheritors. Okay, to receive the planet earth, man. All right, let me go ahead and grab another one real quick. <clears throat> this is Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse uh, 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. You see that? According to the number of the children of Israel. Why? Verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. All right, let's go ahead and grab another one, man. All right, this is, uh, let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 9, and verse, uh, verse 4, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the services of God, and the promises. So in order to receive any of what we just read, you have to be an Israelite, man, to who are Israelites. You see, that's why we had a Messiah, man. That's why we had a, a, a sacrifice, you see, in order for us to be rebound to the Heavenly Father, man. That's why there was a Savior, all right? Who needed saving? The nation of Israel. That word salvation goes back into the Greek, meaning the deliverance of the molestation of thine enemies. All right, let's go ahead and just grab a couple things that they were saying upon the birth of uh, Yahweh Shai and John the Baptist here, man. This is uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 69. And he raised up uh, and hath raised up a horn of salvation. You see, a horn of salvation. You see, a horn representing power. All right, and of what, man? Salvation, being saved, you see? For us, in the house of his servant David. You see that, man? In the house of his servant David. Who is that referring to? The Messiah, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus. You see, the Savior for the nation of Israel, man. Which, which, which in turn, you see, the nation of Israel being saved, all right, beginning with the elect, is going to cause the entire planet Earth to be healed, man. You see, the reason why, uh, for all the earth's problems is because the true inheritors of the planet, the true judges, those who were created to rule, have been put at the bottom, man. As the scriptures say, I've seen servants riding upon horses, all right? And the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked, pursuant to Job 9 and 24, all right? So everything is upside down, man. Esau is not meant to rule, but the nation of Israel. Those that are in this uh, uh, place of rulership, and, and, and what do they do, man? They push the whole world to be in this continual cycle of debt. Meanwhile, whose pockets are getting bigger? Is it mine? Is it yours? Who is it that's sitting on the top that's deceiving the whole world and causing us to continually be in that cycle? Live, work into debt, die in debt. Your children continue the cycle and cycle and cycle over and over and over. These people are not meant to be in power. They have polluted the planet Earth and they are going to be removed. You are going to see a fall, man. You see, there's dark times ahead of us, but they have to get dark in order for them to get better, man. So you could take it any type of way you want. When we say that this is for the nation of Israel, hey, you could take it however you want, man. But really, man, this is for the better of the entire universe, man. All right? <clears throat> so anyway, let's go ahead and go on. This is Luke uh, 1, and let's go to verse uh, 70. It says, As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, you see, of his prophets since the world began. We just got some of the examples, man, of the promises that were made. You see, how would this be made if the nation of Israel was cast off? If they were if they if they were done in their sins and their transgressions, they needed a savior, man. They needed a Messiah. You see, they needed forgiveness. All right. And that's what all those promises were for, man. What do you say? He promised that the nation of Israel would be on top. We just read that he's not a man that he shall lie. All right. So now we're reading what? That during the time of Luke, when Yahweh was being brought forth, they knew and understood that he had visited and redeemed his people, man. They knew and understood that this is the time of salvation that was being prophesied about since the world began. All right? Let's go ahead and go on. Verse uh, 71. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, you see? Be saved from our enemies. At that time was the Roman Empire. All right, and then and really the nations around you, but that chief enemy being the Roman Empire who was oppressing the world. All right, and, and that and when you go into the Book of Revelations, that's that beast that it describes, man. But then that beast, it was wounded and yet lived. You see, coming forth in the time of the Renaissance, being rebirthed, man. 
all right, leading all the way up into day in which you have the hand, the earth has been given into the hand of uh, of Esau, man. America, NATO, and the EU, the same people who were in power at that time, all right, the Roman Edomite. You see the same beast, all right, the same beast system, man. That's why when you go into the origins of Rome, man, it all ties in with the ways of this society today, man, all right. And that's why the Heavenly Father is coming to destroy, man. The scriptures tell you he's coming to destroy and set up a rule. He's a king, all right. Not to come and just sit down and let all these people, you know, continue their reign, man. He's coming to establish a, 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 a new order here on the planet Earth, man. All right. Going on verse uh, 72. To perform the mercy he promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Look at that, man. To remember his holy covenant. The Heavenly Father formed a covenant, all right, with a nation of Israel, who they, which they broke. And he gave us Yahweh Shai. To cause that that uh, a covenant to be remade with the nation of Israel, and this covenant is that never-ending covenant, man. This is that covenant that's gonna bring forth the kingdom of heaven, man. That's gonna usher in ultimately peace on earth, being the end goal. All right, and and this is why they were rejoicing, man, because they knew that all these promises were made, that all this would happen. All right, but according to Christianity today, let's just jump to that one verse. Oh, it's for everybody. No, it's not, man. It's only for the elect of Israel. And that's why you could talk to these guys till you're blue in the face, but they won't get it, man. All right, that's why we don't really care, uh, uh, you know, how, how, how you might feel about it, man. If you feel some type of way, then go on. You see, this is only for the elect, all right? But anyway, going on, it says, <clears throat> 73, the oath which he swore unto our father Abraham that uh, he would grant us that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear. You see that, man? So, you know, ultimately, all right, a a a as you have seen, all right, Yahweh Shai was brought forth to rebound the nation of Israel with the Heavenly Father. All right, now let's go ahead and, and, and get into the context now of what this scripture was talking about in the book of Matthew here, man. Let's read it again real quick. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 28 and verse... 19 go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit so once again what is this talking about man all right let's go ahead and get into the context all right we'll go into the book of ezra uh, the ninth chapter and again man if that guy would have you know if he would have really been sincere and wanted to see what the scriptures had to say then you know he, he may have he may have learned something that day man but instead you know he just didn't want to hear it and you know, just, 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 uh, uh, you know, had his ears closed to him, man. So anyway, this is Ezra 9, and that's why the scriptures say, if the blind leave the blind, they both shall fall into a ditch. All right? You want to go to this guy because he's speaking smooth words or whatever the case may be. Well, hey, guess what, man? The end of that is going to be death. You see, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Where is all the prophecies of Christianity, man? We see all these prophecies unfolding today. Where is Christianity in the midst? All right? Verse, uh, Ezra 9 and 1, it says... Now, when these things were done, the princes came unto me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the uh, people of the lands, doing according to the abominations, even the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves. So they've taken, they've taken their daughters for themselves and, and, and married into these nations, man. All right, it says, and for their sons, and this is going all the way back to ancient times, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yeah, and the hand of the princes and the rulers have been chief in this trespass. You see, and what this brought forth, all right, was, was you know, heathenistic custom being brought into the nation of Israel, man. All right, and then Israel would sin by, by, by cleaving under those customs. You see, starting to worship in their gods, start to worship their, you know, take part in their different, uh, 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 you know, customs and, and, and things, even, even when they cause you to go astray from the Heavenly Father, when they cause you to sin, when they cause you to, to, to break the law, statutes, and commandments, that covenant that, that, that was formed between us and us and our power, man. All right? <clears throat> so that, that was where the problem was, man. All right, so what the nation of Israel, what they pursued to do next is they began to, all of these Israelite children that were born with heathen mothers, they were casting them off. They were no longer counted as Israelites, man. They were pushed off and, and, and forced to, to leave. What happened with all these Israelites, man? They were just done. 
that were just forgotten? Let's go on. It says, verse 3, it says, And when I heard these things, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and my beard and sat down and was astonished. There was assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of the power of Israel because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. And then this is Ezra 10. And uh, I'm going to just jump forth, man, for time's sake. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> let's see here, verse uh, 9, it says, Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month on the twentieth day of the month. And all the people sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter. And for the great rain... And Ezra and the, the priests stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. So you see, they transgressed by taking these strange wives, man. You see, when they took, because when they took these strange wives, they allowed their customs to be brought into the nation of Israel. You see, the nation of Israel was trying to get right with the Heavenly Father at this point, man. Because, because they were already being given over into the hand of the heathen. All right. So what they did, they like I said, man, they pushed off all these Israelites. All right, and and and, and no longer had them, you know, in the congregation, man. All right, which is why when you go into the time of the New Testament, all right, you had this inner circle of the known Jew. If you were outside of that circle, man, if you were uh, 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 acting or or living amongst the heathens in any way, all right, then you were not considered an Israelite. If you weren't in the synagogues, you weren't considered an Israelite. Okay. That's why the blind man. What, what was he threatened with? You see, if you if you if you if you try to uh, uh, you know mention the name Yahweh Shai Hamashiach again, all right, then then you're going to be kicked out of the congregation, and that's exactly what they did to him. Man. So he wasn't in the eyes of that inner circle of Israel. He was no longer considered an Israelite. Man. You see, Yahweh Shai came to abolish that man. Paul was given the duty to abolish that. All right, and let's go ahead and go on, man. So, but you see, when you when you read the context, man, it's totally clear what was going on in that time, man. Let's, let's see in, the, in the, uh, Nehemiah's account. All right. Let's see, let's see what Nehemiah thought about it, man. This is Nehemiah. Uh, chapter 13 and verse uh, 23. It says, In those days I saw Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak the Jews' language. You see that, man? These children were they, they couldn't even they couldn't even speak Hebrew. That's to the point that it had come. You had these children who were Israelites that were speaking heathen languages, acting like heathens, dressing probably like heathens, worshiping heathen deities even. Alright? And this was going all the way to ancient times. So what once again, what happened to the to, to these people, alright, coming all the way to to the time of uh, of the New Testimony, man? Alright? It says, uh, but according to the language of each people, and I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, saying, ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor their daughters unto your sons for yourselves. So you see, so th that, that's, that's how, that's how angry Nehemiah got about it, man. And like I said, then, you know, then, then, then moving on, they, 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 they cast off all those Israelites, all right, right, who are among them, man. And that's why even the book of Maccabees tells you that the, uh, that the, uh, 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 Spartans were Israelites, man. All right. That, that they looked into the, into their history and, you know, Lord willing, I'll, I'll find that preset, man. But they looked into their history and, and, and they found out that they're, uh, that they come from the seed from the line, all right, of the children of Israel. Why, why was that? Because they were being cast off going all the way back when, man. All right, being cast off and pushed off. And of course, what is Jacob, man? The salt of the earth. You see? So Jacob's going to make a, he's going to make some history wherever he goes, man. That's why you have all this, that's why you have all this deep history throughout all these different cultures, man. The, the, the Japanese samurai, you see all these diff, this, this, this deep, this, this, uh, uh, rich culture that you have out there, man, all consists around the nation of Israel. You see? So if you're living amongst the heathen, man, you're suffering and, you know, eh, eh, and really, man, you got salt. And ultimately, at the end of the day, if you're able to receive the glorious light of this gospel, there ain't no doubt about it, man. You are an Israelite. You don't need to come up and prove us no kind of birth, uh, 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 
you know, no kind of, uh, what is it called, man? No kind of uh, genealogy or nothing like that, man. That's why, that's why it was also said, hey, avoid foolish contentions and genealogies, man. We're all made one in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. We are all made one. All right, let's go ahead and fast forward, man. Let's go ahead and jump to the book of Acts now. All right, and you'll see, you'll see uh, uh, the nation of Israel coming together, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, because what were they doing there? Following what was told to them in the book of Matthew, because the book of Acts came after the time of Matthew. Matthew was the it was the uh, basically when you read that when you read these different uh, letters within the New Testament, man. All right, being Matthew, John, Mark, Luke. All right, these are the uh, uh, you know th that apostles' uh, viewpoint of what had happened. All right, his letter of what was going on in that time. Let's read it again, man. Matthew, twenty-eight and verse nineteen. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You see. Go teach all nations, because again, the nation of Israel was scattered amongst all nations. Okay, and we're going to see now in the time uh, 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 of of the Acts what was going on, because during the Acts that was the time when you know after Yahweh Shai was taken up, and the apostles and you know the the order structure within the churches was set up, and they were going out and doing the work of the Lord, man. And let's see the context of of those that were being sealed were. All right, well, uh, see what the beauty brought forth with uh uh you know with with paul's uh title man the heavenly father gave him the law of of pushing this this knowledge throughout the four corners of the earth man and this was the outcome this is acts 2 and uh let's go ahead and start at verse 1 it says and when the day of pentecost was fully come all right which is a high holy uh day it says they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rush of a mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as it were a fire and set upon each of them now remember what we read out of nehemiah that all these israelites they couldn't speak the hebrew man all right and that's exactly what was going on here you had all these israelites which were coming and it'll break it down further as we go on who are coming to take part in this high holy day you see leaving off the ways of the heathen as we said to the uh, salutations to the one-third all right, who've received the glorious light of this gospel and who are leaving the ways of the heathen around them. You see, that's what these guys are doing. Let's go and take part in Pentecost. Let's not let's not take part in this Easter no more. Let's not take part in this Christmas. Let's go ahead and do, let's let's do the holy days in which were made for us, man, in which you know we were instructed to take part in. All right, receive receiving the instruction of life. You see, that's what the scriptures tell you to be reborn. We're being reborn into a whole new way of living, man, because what we received at the heathen is wrong. Verse three, it says. Uh, verse four, it says. And they which were filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, and they all were filled with the Holy Spirit, and begun to speak with the other tongues. And the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. You see that, man? So all these guys out of every nation under heaven, all right, these guys were all gathered together, but they were all Jews, man. They were all Hebrews. You see? They were all Israelites. Verse 6, it says, Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying among another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? You see, so now, you know, all these different guys which were speaking in all these different languages we read earlier in the book of Nehemiah, all right, their whole their whole seed line, all right, their whole seed line who who through who after history was, you know, was was lost in uh uh you know who, I mean who knows who knows how much worse it got man if that time if at that time during Nehemiah they were already not able to speak the Hebrew just imagine how that seed line looked during this time man that's how you know that this thing is beyond us man it's it's Yahweh by Hashem Yahusha it's the spirit that seals you man it's the spirit that you get called and and it's the heavenly Father that 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 chooses you man all right because we were we were so far gone in this world that really there was no clear place for us to return man. But through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh we are returning. All right. Now let's go ahead and go on. Acts 2 and... Uh, oh, that's lucky, man. Hold on one second. Try to take a minute from the grind, man, to, you know, do the true work. And But anyway, let's go ahead and go on. This is uh, Acts uh, 2 and... Uh, let's see here. I'm going to... Uh, verse 8, it says, And how here we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born 
Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and Judah and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, all these lands in which Israelites were coming out of. The land of Asia, you see the land of Cappadocia, the land of Mesopotamia, the land of Elam, those East Indians. All right, from all these different lands, you had Israelites coming out, man. Receiving this gospel, man, through the Holy Spirit. Because once Yahweh was risen up, what did he say? That the Holy Spirit would be brought upon us. All right, this began to happen at this, at, at this time, man. But you see what else is prophesied? That there would be a falling away. You see, the beast would be wounded, Rome, and would yet live. And when it came into its fullest uh, uh, depth of power, all right, the, the, the truth would be brought brought back out again, man. The truth that had been so long without fruit would be declared. All right. Wisdom of Solomon uh, 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 three and one, man, or five and one. All right. The the, the elect rising up on their feet and, uh, uh, and and proclaiming this truth, man. You see all the, the one of the greatest prophecies, uh, Ezekiel, uh, uh, the 37th chapter, man, the Valley of Dry Bones. You see these bones coming together and, and forming uh, uh, the nation of Israel being brought up on their feet and being risen unto life, man. You see, this, this this is the time we're living in, man. And Esau is getting ready to 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 really put his hands on us. You see, to to maintain the, his little kingdom that he has, man. You see, we know according to the prophecies that we got next, man. That we have got the win. All right. Because because man, and, and you see clearly, man, how the Spirit was raising up all these Israelites. That's why you hear the apostles and the elders say it a lot of times when we're living in the time of the Acts. You see, that same time in which the, the truth began to flourish on the planet Earth. But now this is going to be that, that it's going to usher in the kingdom of heaven, man. The war to end all wars. As I said, things are going to get worse in order for them to get better. All right. Um, let's see here, man. Let's go ahead. I want to go ahead and grab another couple of precepts here, man. This is, uh, this is the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 1. James, a servant of God. And of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashayak, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting, you see? To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. You see, now as you go on, you know the context of any time where it says they, them. It's talking about the Israelites, the twelve tribes. This whole letter. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. You see that, man? All right, let me go ahead and grab, a, and grab another one, man. Let's go ahead and jump to the book of Luke real quick now. All right. This is the book of Luke, chapter uh, 15, and uh, verse 3. It says, And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, doeth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it. And you see what this what this parable is referring to, man, is the nation of Israel. You see? Yes, you have those and at this time you had those that though those sheep that were found, and that was representing that inner circle, man. Those Israelites that knew there were Israelites that were following the customs. Alright? But yet the Heavenly Father, man, e even even not all of those Israelites were, were saved, man, because they weren't taking part uh, uh they weren't they weren't acknowledging Yahweh Shai, man. They weren't acknowledging this covenant being rebound. They were still following that old covenant, man. Which that old covenant was 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 broken, you see. So through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Shai, all these sheep were being gathered, man, into one fold. You see, and that's what that, that that's what it's talking about, man. Uh, uh, when you go into the book of Galatians, man, the book of Galatians, the third chapter, you see, all are made one in Yahweh Shai. You see, you see, now uh, 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 there is no Jew nor Greek nor free nor bond. You see, all are made one, man. All right, let's go ahead and go on. It says. Uh, verse 5, and when he had found it, he laid it on his brother's shoulders rejoicing. And when he com cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice uh, with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over the sinner that repenteth, you see, over the sinner that repenteth. And this might be the you know the 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 sinner who was who was running after that old law that was broken, all right. Or this might be the sinner who was living amongst the heathen and following all kind of madness, all right. Which you know for the most part that's that's what all of us are today, man. That's what all of us were. You see, 
None of us, none of us were were just brought forth following the customs of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. We're brought forth following the customs of uh, of the heathen, man. See, but through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, this 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 truth is flourishing, man. Which which marks prophecy, which marks the time of prophecy, man. Which marks the end of Esau's reign. Because the scriptures tell you that once the nation of Israel gets right, uh, uh, the Heavenly Father is going to come back, destroy the wicked, return them to their land, and establish order here on the planet Earth. None of that has been done. So throughout Christianity and, and, and what's set up here today, it's, it, just, it just is all total lies compared to the prophecies that we've been promised, man. All right? That's why I said earlier, man, where's, where's, where's Christianity fall in the midst of all this prophecy that's, that, that's being fulfilled? All right? Go number seven, it says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine persons which need no no repentance, you see. And that's that's the kind of mindset that the uh you know that, that inner circle of the known Jew was in, man. You see, oh man, it you know, it, it don't uh 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 you know, I'm all I'm already saved, you know, I've been following the law the hey man, you don't need a physician that then this ain't for you. All right, you see? Is for the elect of the nation of Israel, man. Let me go ahead and grab another precept. All right, just to further, all right, edify, man. How you know we've 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 come out of the world and been brought into one way of living, man. This is Ephesians chapter five, and. Uh, Verse 4, it says, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called, in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. You see, so we've been called out of the world into one fold, man. All through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, it says, But every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of of Hamashayak, wherefore he saith, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gave gifts unto, unto men, and that gift is, is the Holy Spirit, man. You see, giving different different brothers different uh, uh you know different uh, uh skill sets within this truth, man. You know, giving different brothers their lots, man. You see now now through the spirit we have this whole collection of the body which is which is known as Yahweh Shai's body, man. All right, and you know, just like just like a regular body, you know, it all has, you know, its differences. Your fingers, your toes, your arms, your your head, even your body. You see, but it's all one body, man. We have all been made one through Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, whether so ever you were in the world, and now you know and understand if the Spirit is doing with you. All right, the context of what was being said in the Book of Matthew, the twenty-eighth chapter and the nineteenth verse. Shalom. Call Allah Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai.